Brian Hendricks and again we're working on this Red Fox. I've got the ear cartilages painted there and they're all dry now so we're ready to epoxy those and what I've got down here is uh, the Epo Grip clear paste. It's a two-part epoxy, part A, part B. Um, I've written on the top here six to ten. That stands for six to ten minutes. That's what you've got at normal room temperature with this stuff. Um, if you want to slow that time down, keep it in your refrigerator till you're ready to use it. And it being cold like that will slow down the, the kick on it. It'll give you a little more time to play around. I've already put equal amounts in this little cup. And I put a drop of paint in there. That's not really so much to color the epoxy. It's really just to tell when I've got it mixed well. But I've used the same color there that I've used on my ear, ear liners. Just to, or the ear cartilages up there. Just that mix. So it just helps to really know that you've got the epoxy mixed well. And normally I have my ear turned halfway the other direction before I mix this up. But so I'm gonna have to hurry a little bit here because I kind of already messed up. <laughs> so we've got that mixed pretty good. There's the ear cart ear liner that's gonna go in. I'm gonna turn this back about halfway. Try to get that tip turned. You know, it's hard to see what I'm doing here. I've got that. There I can pull that ear tip. Get that turned out there so that the ear liner will go right in there. Okay, we've got that turned about halfway. I've got a plastic bag pinned on there. That's just kind of protecting the fur in case I get a little stringer of epoxy or something. See, I've created a hole there now. With that cartilage being kind of dry, it'll stay open for me pretty good. Now I'm gonna take a pretty good glob of what I have here, probably a little better than half of it. That's a pretty good glob. And I'm gonna put that right into that hole and kind of work it toward the tip if I can. I'm just going to squeeze that and pull the stick out. Okay, it's going to kind of be closed up now a little bit, but that's fine. Now the rest of it, I'm going to, like I say, i got to kind of hurry because we don't have a lot of time on this. And I'm going to smear some of this on my ear liner. And all that's going to do is just uh, ensure that I, I've got it everywhere. I'm going to get a good... Uh, a good uh, adhesion. This stuff is really sticky. You want to make sure your holes are every hole in your ear skins filled. Acetone will help a little bit if you do get some of it in the hair. Okay, we're just going to take the tip of that. See, I didn't get it clear down there. That's all going to work down there because that big glob I've got in there. So I'm going to slide that ear liner in there. And we're going to Another good reason not to get it all the way down the ear base because you got to get this skin turned back over there and you don't want to get that all over the hair. Okay, there we go. Now I can feel that big glob that's, so I'm going to take that big glob and I'm going to work it right down that edge of that ear so I know I've got epoxy all the way out to the edge. Same thing down this way, I can feel that big glob. It's a bubble of it just going right ahead of my fingers there. It's that little flap area there that we talked about before. Okay, the rest of it's just going to get evened out, and the excess is going to get worked right down that ear liner a little bit there. Now, all, already right away, I'm, I'm I'm pushing up on that ear liner now because I want to make sure I get that ear liner all the way up into that ear, and do a test fit on these. You know, stick that ear in and out of there a couple times till you get used to the feel of it and how it's going to go, and how the hair patterns need to lay. And that'll help you immensely to get a nice, uh, nice finished looking ear. If you're not familiar with all that. Again, we've only got six to ten minutes on this stuff, so. Now, what I'm doing is just kind of trying to line everything up, keep those ear edges where they belong. This hair right here, that needs to keep working that across. Those are protective hairs that cover the opening of the ear. You might want to have your reference out right now too and have it sitting there so you can look at those hair patterns. Keep that edge of that ear nice and crisp, nice and uh, sharp, and a nice clean edge there. Keep working that epoxy until it's nice and, nice and thin out on those edges. And work the excess down the ear and into the bottom. It'll start to kick here pretty quick and we'll be done. 
you'll feel it heating up when it's starting to kick. A little flap area. That's not anything. See, that's there's the flap area right there. So the outside part of it, sometimes it'll separate a little bit, so you will have some epoxy in there. We're just going to keep it right together like that for right now. We're not going to worry about that little flap at this point. I'll show you later how I'm going to take care of that. Right now, I'm concerned about these hair patterns and keeping those where I want them. Because I want everything to be right where it's supposed to be when that uh, epoxy kicks. I've got a brush here. If it's not, with everything being dry and fluffy, you can tell just what your finished ear is going to look like instead of having it all wet and mushy and guessing what it's going to look like once it's all dried and fluffed out. It's a pretty good shaped red fox ear right there. You got these hairs, everything's, the hairs are flowing across the opening of the ear nice. I'm just going to let that kick and let that harden up now. And then we'll do the same thing to the other ear. And then uh, at some point after I've got the head done, I will uh, show you how to take care of that little ear flap, what I do for that during the drying process.
little scarred, little scar tissue there or something. Okay. Not that hardened. 